Japanese people know what kendama is, but they had no idea how cool kendama is right now. It looks really simple, but you can do so many tricks with it. On today's episode, I'm here with Yuka Hyuga. She organizes a kendama and kendama associated events in Japan and overseas. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you because I didn't know about kendama really until fairly recently. Actually, you introduced me to kendama maybe last year, a year or so ago, and I didn't realize what a huge subculture it is. For, for people who have never heard of kendama, like, mm. what do you usually say to them? Like, how do you explain it to them? Um, kendama is kids' toy, like a kids' wooden scale toy for a long time. And actually, it's got more than a hundred years of history. Mm. Every single Japanese person knows what kendama is. And that they know how to play kind of vaguely, but they don't really know yet. Kendama now became international game and sport. So now like people who are like a BMX rider or skateboarder or inline skater got into it. So and then yeah. from getting interested in kendama, then people get interested in like coming to Japan to do it here. Yeah, well, Japan is their dream destination. And especially like Hiroshima, Hatsukaichi city, it's um, birthplace of kendama. Oh, wow. So it's, it sounds really crazy, but some people never heard of Tokyo, but they know Hatsukaichi. Really? <laughs> yeah, Hatsukaichi is such a really small town and maybe even Japanese people have never heard of it before. So when I ask them, okay, so where in Japan do you want to go? They go like, Hatsukaichi, not Tokyo. You know, that's wow. really, really crazy. How did you get into kendama? What was, did you find out about it through oh. YouTube or what was your experience getting um, into it? I was six years old and I found it in Gakudo daycare center mm -hmm. in Kawasaki city. Mm -hmm. I had no choice actually. Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody got kendama and we just practiced. Oh, okay. But then how did, so how did that continue into like your professional life? Like making it into like something mm. you now do as like part of your job. Like, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about like your work and how you work with kendama now? Yeah, so I've always liked kendama, but um, I didn't really think about doing something professional with the kendama. And when I watch in some TV show called You Are Nani Shini Nippon e. mm -hmm. So why did you come to Japan? Yeah, it's a really big show, really popular show. Some guy from Switzerland came to Japan and Kendama actually brought him to uh, Japan because he uh, wanted to compete at some contest in Tokyo. And when I heard that, I was really, really shocked. Wait, now like uh, falling people play kendama? And I had no idea mm -hmm. that kendama became an international game. But on top of that, there are some Japanese fans for them. So shocking. Yeah. And at the moment, I knew I really wanted to do something for kendama, like professionally. Okay. So I quit my previous job and I started like networking on Instagram and Facebook. And I found a guy who just like I created some like a Tokyo underground kendama team called the Kendagaya Club and I sent him direct message and I told him um hey I actually want to do something for kendama so can we meet up and he actually didn't really think I was legit <laughs> he thought I was from some random illegal online dating service or anything <laughs> like that you know just to lead him to legal online service uh -huh. so he didn't really believe me so he didn't want to meet you at first because he no, thought he I was, was like suspicious of you yeah very okay. <laughs> but i'm um, convinced to him i'm legit i really want to meet you yeah. and i want to hear about um current kendama scene he finally <laughs> agreed to meet me mm -hmm. and we met up and he introduced me to many people mm -hmm in kingdom scene back then then i here i am i guess cool cool so then what does it mean like you're in a role now where you're like working with people both in japan and like players who are coming from outside japan to participate in events but you're also going to other countries to yeah. like organize things is it typically pretty tough then to act like because that's a huge role like mm. having to take care of a person who doesn't know a city and having to explain everything to them, like not just words, but like culture points mm. and then like, you know, where to go, what to do at a specific time as well. Like, yeah. is that tough for you? It's really fun and it's really exciting and 
sometimes it's really inspiring because I get to meet so many people from all over the world and I get to travel around with them. But maybe for the first years, a little bit tough because they do something really crazy <laughs> and something I had no idea like well, why would you do that you know because they just didn't know Japanese culture or how like they should behave sometimes because most of the kingdom players are really young like a teenager or early 20 or something like that so I've got so many crazy stories so um, all my kendama friends um, went to 7-Eleven to get a Wi-Fi and they were just playing kendama in front of 7-Eleven but really crazy tricks and there was this lady in a neighborhood mm -hmm. <laughs> she she actually called the police and she reported the police that oh my god there were so many gaijin players like a foreigners playing in nunchak <laughs> in front of 7-Eleven <laughs> Because she didn't, she had no idea that was kendama. Okay. Because the tricks they were playing, doing, was like really crazy, too crazy for her to think that was actually kendama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She knew kendama, of course, but the tricks are kind of beyond her imagination. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. So yeah. since then, though, I think like some of like the events that you've been doing are, aren't just in Japan, right? You've been going to other countries and like making events happen there. Right? Yeah. Um, so personally, I try to um, make girls scene bigger. Mm -hmm. So this year, I hosted three all girls kendama events, mm -hmm. one in America and one in Tokyo and one, one in Taiwan. Okay. Are there more boys than girls that are playing kendama around the world then? Uh, yeah, it's still like a male dominant community still. So we try to, yeah, bring more female players into community and we just want to do more, you know, contents or like uh, events for girls players. Well, actually we have all girls collective page on Facebook mm -hmm. and we have new female players from different countries. Cool. So what, is, what kind of things are you hoping to do more of in the future? Um, I definitely want to um, host more all-girls events in different countries. And I have a big event coming up which is called All Girls Kingdom Open. And I made a trick video where we had like 21 female players from all different countries. Like actually 21 different countries, mm -hmm. which was really, really cool to see. What's the event going to be like on Sunday? I think maybe around 40 female players gonna enter for the competition and we have three divisions basic intermediate and open and we have some like a uh, competition format where people compete their the tricks so it's going to be really big and I'm so excited and we do also video contests only for girls and I definitely want to keep doing it cool so if people want to find information about your event where can they find that it's on Glocken's website so if you google Glocken GLO OKEN and Girls Event, I think you can find the page. And I also have Facebook pages called also Kendama Gal. Awesome, okay. Because you teach actually too. You've taught workshops and you've taught like people how to play. Yeah, I love teaching. Will you teach me a trick? Yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. Definitely. I would love that. Great, great. What's like basic let's start with trick? yeah, what's like the most basic trick? Basic trick. Okay, it's called a big cup. So okay. you basically catch the ball on a big cup. Big cup. So there hmm? is there there are two cups. There's one big cup and one yeah, small, small cup. cup. Okay. So this is big. This is big. Okay. Okay. Can you hold like this? Okay. Two fingers and three fingers on a small cup. Okay. Yep. And then you pull Tama straight up like this. Yeah. Oh no. And knees are actually very important. Okay. So you go one, two, three. Oh, I know. Yeah. Okay, so if I want to level up from big cup, okay, is um, there a bigger cup? <laughs> um, actually, smaller cup. The small. Oh, it's wait, called. You actually, can catch it here. Yeah, yeah. So we have three cups: mm -hmm. big cup, small cup, and middle cup. Middle cup. Okay. And we can also call it base cup. So let's do base cup. Base. So from ne same your next position. level. Same okay. position and same grip. Okay. And you do a little bit pull, a little bit higher than before. Okay. 
Ah, oh. so close. Okay. You almost had it. Wow, you barely really gently. Moved. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're just. Yeah, yeah, just like. Oh! That was perfect. <laughs> what? Really clean. Perfect. <laughs> I, I don't even know how that happened just now. <laughs> Do you want to try? Thank you so much for coming and like and talking about kendama and yeah. like the culture of kendama. Sure. It's really interesting and I had honestly I had no idea until you talked to me about this. It, it's like a traditional part of Japan. It's like a traditional game in Japan, but it seems like there are so many other like subcultures in Japan that get like all the attention. There's just this this whole really interesting new culture about it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's really amazing that kendama brings so many awesome people together. And you get to know so many different people through the piece of wood, you know. Yeah. It's really, really crazy. crazy, you get to travel around the world, so yeah, it's really amazing.